So those were the, the parameters, the fixed parameters. Now the temperature line in red depicts the parcel change in temperature as it rises in altitude. So you can see uh, on this particular day, this parcel cools adiabatically up to about 8,000 feet right here. Okay, and then there's a there's an an inversion where the temperature the rate of temperature change uh, is decreased significant, significantly, and then eventually above 12,000 it starts cooling again. The left line is the dew point, and you can see the dew point is cooling as temperature increase uh, as altitude increases. So keep those two in mind is what we're going to see next is that a parcel that rises and cools adiabatically once it matches that dew point line that we saw this is the dew point line here that is fixed then that is where condensation will occur and a cloud will form above that temperature or above that altitude and in that case it's 7000 feet So putting it all together, a skew T with a dew point and temperature from a radio sound. Um, and I got all this information I, online. Thankfully, I didn't have to create these graphs. Um, but in this case, you look at the dew point. So this is the dew point temperature profile actual, okay? The dew point line, however, runs from lower left to upper right. It's almost a straight line. And so in order to predict what's going to happen to a parcel of hot air that is rising, you take that temperature at the surface for the dew point, and you follow this up that dew point line, and where that intersects with the, the thermal parcel that's cooling adiabatically, that's where you'll, you'll get the cloud. Now I'll show you, there's uh, something that may help clarify this for you. And you can see that in this case, well, I'll, I'll hold off. So in this picture, it's a little different. So we're not going to get clouds. And I want someone to tell me, so here's the dew point temperature, following the dew point profile that's fixed. Here's the thermal parcel. It's cooling adiabatically as it rises. Why in this case are there no clouds forming? Never hit the dew point. There's no intersection. Exactly. So the thermal parcel ends up cooling and being constant with all the air above it before it ever reaches the dew point temperature. So that's why there are days where we just do not get clouds. <coughs> So the air is, we, we usually say the air is too dry. It's almost like a haze dome day. Yeah, th that one is so close that it would be surprising to me if we did not see some markers out there of some, some type of uh, moisture that was up, up high. So, uh, I'll ask a question. Go ahead. I was gonna say, what is the significant, I see that the bottom of the green line is the dew point at the surface. Mm -hmm. And the green line is an indication of the uh, the moist adiabatic cloud stream. Is that what that is? No, the this is the actual dew point temperature uh, uh, um, the uh, with altitude as you increase in altitude. But okay. we take the point at the surface, and that is what helps determine when you'll get that condensation at what altitude. Okay. And in this and in this case. You know, with this parcel, not look, not looking at the red line, which is the uh, actual environmental lapse rate of the air that they measured as the as the balloon went aloft. If we intersected those two diagram or those two lines, we would have expected clouds at well, it must be 7,000 feet or a little bit higher. So if that hot air if the um, 
the actual environmental lapse rate were skewed like this, we'd have actually seen clouds at yeah. 7,500 feet. And now we're going to stop here and let's, let's uh, hear some questions and make sure that everybody gets that concept. So, so go ahead. Environmental versus... What is your name, man? Uh, Rob. Rob. Yeah. yeah. Um, environmental lapse rate is always different than the adiabatic? Yeah, the so the adiabatic lapse rate is the... Uh, What's supposed to happen. Is what, yes, is yeah. the, how it cools with altitude, how a parcel would cool with altitude. This is what actually was measured by the balloon with altitude, so it's quite different. Good question. What's the timing on this? Like, when does this come out and what uh, the days uh, I think it's, you know, I can never remember uh, whether it's actual or, or GMT, but it's like 11 and 11. Um, 11 at night, 11 in the morning. Oh, okay. Now there are, there are other models now that uh, they use satellites to help also ascertain the, the um, atmospheric conditions um, uh, using some kind of a Doppler system, but, um, and that's also used in addition to the balloon so that they can get more accurate information. So we can get like a skew at noon, at one, at yeah. two, and at three, and yeah. four? Yeah, the models will lay it out in that, in that uh, one hour increments. And so like here you're, you're launching 1100 feet off the ground, is that the idea with the dots? Yeah, it looks that's like the, that, looks like that. That's the airport, that's the altitude. That's not here though. The elevation of the airport, right? Right, of the, that is the elevation of the, the site where this um, prediction was um, put together. And it can be anywhere, I mean it can be anywhere. You can put lat, lat lawn in, of your house and, and you can get a skew T diagram for that. So it's an interpolative, it's in, yeah, interpolative um, diagram based on the balloons that are being sent up 300 miles apart from each other, or more. Is it where actually Skies gets all its? Uh... Uh, so, uh, they use that as well. Some of that data you can get a skew T off of XC Skies actually. So how does the, the skew T on XC Skies compare with the one on the site that you're? Yeah, I haven't I haven't really used the one on XC Skies. It's not as interactive as the the National Weather Service the NOAA diagram. Where, where do those balloons go? Do we find them around? Yeah, they they got some GPS to them, so they go and retrieve them and they reuse them. Yeah. I understand the moist green line. Moist. What is your name again? John Earlbeck. John Earlbeck. Thanks. And I understand the, the green line, the moist adiabatic uh, lapse rate. But again, what's the one that looks like it goes up in temperature? The gray one. Where? Can you explain that one again? This one here. Yes. This is the dew point profile. And it goes. Uh, it's warms with altitude, right? Well, it's a skewed diagram, so it cools. And it cools at a lower rate than the than the uh, the hot parcel, the adiabatic lapse rate. Oh yeah, because the temperatures are slanted in the, oh, slanted oh, to the okay. right. Oh, okay. See, <coughs> versus. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to get to the meat of this here real quick. Oh wait. Go ahead. I was just going to say, my Navy days, I supported the radio zone pro program. So when a radio zone balloon goes up and it pops, that thing comes down and it pops. There's a little note on it that says, if found, please send it to this address. That's, oh, cool. That's all that's really on. Oh, yeah. Is oh, that's great. Postage included? Postage included? Here's a here's an interesting interesting depiction, and um, it's generally known as spread out. And you'll note that the converging dew point and temperature lines indicate a large area of cloud development at 7,000 feet. So you can see that there's an inversion up here that really caps the lift, stops stops the lift from going any higher, stops the cloud formation from going any higher because it's reached the equilibrium with its surroundings. So you've got the dew point here following the dew point line, the fixed dew point line. It meets up with the 
hot parcel of air that is cooling adiabatically by the dotted line. Where they meet, they form a cloud. Well, the, the parcel is still now, the parcel is still cooling, but now because it's condensed into a cloud, it cools at the saturated adiabatic lapse rate, which was a curved line that went like this, right here. So it's cooling, and it's, the cloud is building, continuing to be developed by that hot air that's cooling, and then when it meets, meets that red line, now it's in equilibrium with its surroundings, so no more cloud development above that, that altitude. So what happens on a day like that is the cloud just spreads out and you, I mean we saw a little bit of it yesterday early and, and uh, um, you know people were asking me, oh, are, is it going to overdevelop? And I, you know, my experience is, is that we get so much cloud formation that early that the shading stops the heating, that stops the parcels from rising, that stops the clouds from forming. Hence, it opened up on us a little later and it got a little better. It wasn't quite so dense of cloud cover around 3 o'clock. And then later, you know, it got drier and drier. And we saw very limited cloud development. 